15 bands and strange things that only exist in India. If you asked me which is the most peculiar land on earth, I will immediately talk about India. Here, real men will hold hands while walking down the street, everyone eats with their hands, and people must adhere to countless bizarre prohibitions. Join me on a journey to India today, and I will show you the laws and strange things that even in the imagination of humanity have never been thought of before. Number 15. Ban on alcohol advertising. This is perhaps one of the longest standing prohibitions on this list. In India, advertising alcoholic beverages has been illegal since the late 1990s. In fact, many states across the country, such as Gujarat, Nagaland, Manipur, and Mizoram, have gone a step further and strictly prohibit the consumption of alcohol together. But alcohol companies have found alternative solutions to convey their brand to consumers. One such example is surrogate advertising, where liquor companies promote their brands by advertising various brand extensions like mineral water, soda, CDs, airlines, and even a cricket team. It is said that India is a significant market for whiskey in the world, and liquor companies cleverly circumvent the ban by finding loopholes in the law to advertise their brands. In fact, among the list today, this is the most practical prohibition. But it is not effective when Indian men can be considered true alcohol enthusiasts. Number 14. Ban on dancing in bars. I don't know if they have perception issues or not, but bars are clearly created for revelry and partying. Yet people in India are banned from dancing there. Initially, this ban applied to female dancers in bars. If you are a woman and caught dancing in a dance bar in India, you could be fined a minimum of $10,000 and could ultimately face three years in prison. It is believed that these bars are seen as establishments with deviant interests. Therefore, to curb it, the government passed a law revoking licenses of all dance bars. As days go by, the measures of Indian authorities become more stringent, and Indian police even arrest all girls dancing in bars, whether they are dancers or just guests out to have fun. One truly insane and conflicting aspect of this ban is that India considers the profession of prostitution legal. So, why ban female dancers in bars, who are often much more graceful than sex workers? Number 13. Ban on parties with foreigners, dance, lingerie, and now parties. This list couldn't get any sadder than this. The Karnataka state government in India recently banned party organizers from inviting foreigners to events unless approved by the government. The reason for this is the increasing number of crimes against foreign citizens in India. This has become a serious concern, and thus, the government decided to prohibit their participation in social gatherings without prior permission. Even if you can invite Rihanna, Bieber, or One Direction to your party, but you will have to provide details of all the foreign guests to the police beforehand and allow the authorities to film them the entire time they are at your event. It sounds strange, and there have been many proposals to lift this ban, but the government seems to enjoy killing the joy. Number 12. Ban on foie gras. A French foie gras is one of the most delicious and expensive dishes in the world, but for the people of India, it is abhorrent. They have removed this delicacy from their menus and officially become the first country in the world to ban the import of foyer grec. This ban was declared after an animal rights group from London protested that the methods used to produce this delicacy from goose liver are cruel. They also argued that they wanted the ban because large restaurants were promoting the use of foie gras as a peculiar thing throughout the country, a preference that could be a crime. In reality, some countries like Israel, Germany, the UK, and the state of California have banned the production of foie gras, but India is the first country to cease its import. Number 11. Taboo on menstruation. While all developed countries in the world educate children about gender openly from an early age, in the second most populous country in the world, this issue is often overlooked. The menstrual cycle of women is an absolute taboo, a shameful matter in daily life in India. It has been a frightening silence in Indian society for hundreds of years. A recent study by the United Nations Children's Fund Arn Fincef revealed that 71% of adolescent girls in India are still unaware of menstruation. Until they experience it for the first time, 
and many girls drop out of school because of it. Additionally, another report by the non-governmental organization Dastroy, published in 2019, pointed out that 23 million girls drop out of school annually due to the lack of proper menstrual hygiene tools and facilities, including sanitary pads and information about menstruation. Public health experts and non-governmental organizations working in this field also highlight the lack of basic services, such as access to sanitation and clean water, as well as societal prejudices, harassment, and taboos. In addition to the mental and psychological stress, a significant challenge in the menstrual hygiene issue is that many people lack access to essential products. For many, menstruation and how to deal with it are still obscured by cultural and social taboos and restrictions leading to adolescent girls being unaware of scientific facts and health hygiene practices, sometimes causing health issues. This culture of silence creates a sense of shame about menstruation within families and communities. Number 10. Men holding hands? If one day you happen to see two men holding hands, you might think they're a gay couple. But if you ever set foot in India, this is entirely Anywhere in India, we can witness moments of hand-holding between men. Asking some men about why they hold hands in public, they seem to be puzzled by the question. It's understandable because from birth, Indian men have had this habit. In Indian culture, holding hands signifies intimate friendship between brothers or friends. This closeness is not limited to men. Women do the same. Indian women walking together might hold hands, interlace their fingers, simply expressing kamrat in certain situations like religious ceremonies, festivals or significant events. Holding hands also signifies unity and community spirit. In general, the act of men holding hands in India represents friendly affection rather than romantic love. So, don't be surprised to see many same-gender couples in India. It's the opposite of what you might think. I'll explain this more clearly to you shortly. Number 9. Prohibition of Beef India is one of the country with the highest population of cows in the world, but it's quite unbelievable that beef is entirely banned here. In 2015, the government of the state of Maharashtra, India's second largest state, imposed a ban on the sale and possession of beef with penalties ranging up to 10,000 rupees and a maximum of five years in prison for those convicted. The pain sparked widespread opposition on social media, especially from meat enthusiasts and suppliers across the state. But despite their efforts, they failed to dissuade the government from enacting the law. The ban was indeed implemented to align with religious sentiments across the country. It's important to know that cows are considered sacred animals in India, especially within the Hindu community. Followers of Jainism worship cows and those following Hinduism regard the cow as a sacred being they do not consume beef. The beauty of a young girl's eyes is even likened to the eyes of a female cow. From ancient times, the people in this region have considered the cow as their ancestor. Indus consider the cow as a sacred animal but not the buffalo. While many countries view beef as a primary food source, in India it is the opposite and no one dares to eat it. Consuming beef is considered sacrilegious. Only waste products such as cow urine and dung are used for medicinal purposes from treating skin diseases to cancer. Other factors contributing to the sanctity of cows include references in the Vedas where killing cows is prohibited. When Muslims and Mongols invaded, the symbol of protecting cows was used to emphasize unity between indigenous religions. Number 8. Ban on mannequins wearing bikinis. Believe it or not, this is indeed a ban currently being enforced in India. The government has voted to prohibit the display of mannequins wearing bikinis in shop windows in a move they believe will reduce cases of sexual harassment and recent incidents of attacks based on lustful motives across the country. Officials argue that mannequins wearing revealing lingerie and seductive stockings are shameful for girls and have polluted the minds of men throughout the city, going against societal morals. This ban was passed in lieu of the Indecent Representation of Women Prohibition Act 1986, which relates to portraying the figure of a woman or any of her body parts in an indecent, corrupt, or injurious manner to public morality. This ban immediately faced strong opposition from most of the Indian population. Ironically, 
These mannequins are not as provocative as the sensual sculptures and carvings in famous temples like Kajuraho, where scenes of group sexual activities are displayed. Female customers had varying opinions. Some welcomed the ban, believing it would reduce sexual attacks on women. Others opposed the ban, considering it foolish and backward. If you visit India, you may need to enter a store to know it sells laundry because there won't be any signs or advertisements outside indicating that they sell innerwear for women. Number 7. Consequences of Revealing Attire One of the survival tactics in India that you must remember when you come here is your clothing. You might not be aware that the rate of women and children facing harassment in India is the highest in the world. This is a consequence of prevalent misconceptions in the culture of many Indian men. Therefore, it's better not to dress too revealingly while traveling in India if you want to avoid troublesome situations or even attacks. Moreover, if you plan to visit temples, both men and women must dress modestly and conservatively. India is a country with many ancient and sacred temples. Anyone visiting these places wants to explore them, but to enter dressing modestly is an absolute requirement. In fact, in some places, women are required to wear Muslim clothing to pass through the gate. Additionally, everyone, regardless of gender, must remove their shoes when entering the inner sanctum. It's not an official government ban, but it's an unwritten rule in Indian society. Follow it to ensure your safety, especially if you're a woman. Number 6. Red dot on the forehead. Many of us may have wondered why in movies or any images of Indian people, we always see a red dot on the foreheads of women. Is it for beautification? or does it hold some ritualistic significance? In reality, this red dot has significant meaning for women in this country. Indians believe that placing a dot between the eyebrows signifies joy and good luck. Therefore, they call these dots bindi, meaning small dot or drop of water in Hindi. Indian women apply a red dot or gemstone here to become wiser, more enlightened, and to ward off demons. Some also believe that the red dot of the bindi is like the third eye of Indian women. The red color of the bindi symbolizes honor, love, and prosperity. In the southern part of India, married women traditionally wear the bindi to show that they are settled in married life. The size of the dot between the two eyes also signifies the status of Indian women. In India, only married women are allowed to wear the bindi. On the wedding day, the groom personally applies the bindi on the bride's forehead to indicate that the woman has been married. According to tradition, only married women are allowed to wear this lucky dot. If a married woman fails to wear this mark after marriage, she may face criticism from her parents, uncles, aunts, and close relatives who may suspect whether her husband is still alive. Of course, unmarried women and widows are not allowed to wear the lucky dot. However, with the development and progress of society today, the scope of women wearing the lucky dot has also expanded. Some young girls and unmarried women also wear the bindi. Furthermore, people now demand that the shape and color of the lucky dot must match each face, hairstyle, and dress. Number 5. Prohibited hand and feet gestures. There is an extensive list of social norms in India, and it's crucial to learn them if you plan to visit. A single wrong gesture might cost you dearly. Let's start with the left hand. When the cultural beliefs of the Indian people, the left hand is considered unclean and often used for activities like removing shoes or cleaning feet. Therefore, a strict prohibition in India is to never use the left hand when giving or receiving something from a local. This is deemed impolite and uncivilized. If invited to someone's home in India, it's crucial to remember to remove your shoes outside the door before entering. Always keep your feet clean and avoid using them to step on any objects inside the house. If you accidentally violate this rule, touch the object with your hand and then bring your hand close to your eyes to signify an apology. Another social etiquette you should know when in India is to avoid pointing at people or anything with your fingers. Pointing is considered rude and polite and will immediately draw attention if you violate this norm. Number 4. Prohibition of LGBT If you belong to the LGBT community, be prepared for the possibility of being attacked or having food thrown at you when you set foot in this country. Even entering here might be impossible as the government is strict with transgender individuals. 
Rights related to same-sex relationships have been a hot topic worldwide, and many countries like France, Brazil, Denmark, Ireland, and recently the United States, have progressed and shown their support by legalizing it. However, India still relies on its cultural standards and refuses to recognize same-sex relations. According to the government, homosexuality is considered a disorder and needs to be prevented. In fact, India elevated this ban in 2009, but the Supreme Court recently reinstated it in 2013, dealing a harsh blow to the basic rights of thousands of LGBT individuals nationwide. Strong protests were witnessed across the country after the ban was reintroduced. Number 3. Eating with hands I'll show you a video clip of an Indian meal that may seem unhygienic as they use their hands to mix everything and scoop it into their mouths. Don't they know how to use chopsticks, spoons, or other utensils? Why do you eat in such a messy way? In reality, the practice of eating with hands in India is related to Ayurveda, a historical system of medicine originating in ancient India. According to Ayurveda, Eating with hands is beneficial for health because your body will perceive the temperature of the food. When you use your hands to scoop the food, you can feel whether it's too hot, too cold, or at the right temperature to put into your mouth. The brain also sends signals to the stomach to prepare for digestion. The nerve endings at the fingertips help convey information to the brain that you are about to eat. The brain then sends signals to the stomach to release digestive fluids and enzymes, aiding in effective digestion. According to Ayurveda, eating with hands not only fills the stomach but also nurtures the spirit of everyone. When you touch the food directly with your hands, you create a physical and spiritual connection with the dish. Additionally, Indian folklore believes that the five fingers represent the five elements forming the universe. Space, air, fire, water, and earth. Indians believe that if these five elements are combined when you eat, it will make the food tastier and aid in better digestion. While eating, Indians typically use only their right hand to scoop food. They often sit cross-legged on the ground with a straight back. Before sitting, a cloth is usually spread to avoid direct contact with the ground. Indians touch the food only with their fingertips, avoiding the use of the entire palm. Despite the reasons Indians provide, eating with hands can be unhygienic and this traditional practice should be reconsidered to ensure the health of the community. Number 2. Public Display of Affection Prohibition If you and your partner are traveling in India, you should try to restrain yourselves from kissing or showing affection in public until you get back to your hotel, because a kiss on the street can lead to both of you being arrested. It may sound like a joke, but this is a serious matter in India. In the world's second most populous country, expressing love publicly is illegal. To be honest, any form of public display of affection is considered a crime. Section 294 of the Indian Penal Codes strictly prohibits and imposes penalties for obscenity in public places, while crimes against women such as rape and domestic violence still require stricter laws expressing love openly is a taboo in a culturally rich country like India. In fact, in 2014, this prohibition led to a nationwide non-violent protest moral policing called the Kiss of Love campaign, during which thousands of couples publicly kissed in defiance. This protest gained attention worldwide, but it couldn't change the authorities' decision. Number 1. Bizarre Wedding Rituals When discussing peculiar things in India, one cannot overlook the unique wedding rituals. You might find it hard to believe what people in India do on their wedding day. In India, people can marry a tree or even a pot. This stems from the ancient culture of the Indian people. If a woman's astrological chart shows the presence of the planet Mars, she is considered manglik. Hindus believe that a manglik woman brings bad luck to her husband. Therefore, they might marry her to a tree, a dog, or a pot to ward off in ceremonies involving the groom he may be privileged to have his mother-in-law wash his feet. In the Gujarati community, when the groom enters the bride's home, the bride's mother performs a foot washing ritual using madhu paka, a mixture of milk and honey. This is a traditional way of welcoming esteemed guests into an ancient Indian home. In some other regions, the groom might be subjected to being pelted with tomatoes, flowers, or other peculiar items. Their wedding rituals are incredibly diverse. 
and researchers have not been able to catalog them all. So we've embarked on a fascinating journey full of unique insights and reflections about India. From strict marriage regulations to rules about parties, clothing, the country faces challenges and controversies surrounding personal freedom and human rights. But above all, India is not the only country with harsh and strange prohibition laws. We invite you to follow us and continue to Colombia, a place that will truly surprise you. 14 Prohibitions and Strange Things That Only Exist in Colombia There is a place in America hiding many peculiar things where couples need to be cautious in front of the mother's witness, or even crazier, celebrate 100 New Year's festivities in just a short year. Hard to believe, isn't it? I know you can't imagine why such bizarre things happen, but don't worry, everything will be clarified in a few minutes because this is a video about 15 prohibitions and strange things that only exist in Colombia. Number 14, wedding night must be witnessed by the bride's mother. Imagine you're about to do something with your wife and her mother suddenly shows up and stays there all night to watch you and your husband do it. It is probably the most embarrassing and uncomfortable feeling for anyone. But in Colombia, this is a very normal thing and any young person getting married will have to go through something like this. In traditional Colombian custom, the wedding night must be performed in the presence of the bride's mother. According to Colombian beliefs, the supervision of the mother is very helpful when young couples are inexperienced in marriage. The mother will sit and observe the newlyweds on their wedding night. She will immediately provide necessary instructions if their actions seem clumsy. In this way, the relationship between the couple will be strengthened by harmony and love. According to Colombians, this helps the marital bond become stronger and last longer. Oh, it seems its purpose is to be good for the young couple, but it seems to bring more embarrassment and trouble than benefit. Number 13. Ban iPhones Colombia is the only country to ban Apple's iPhone and iPad products, preventing the company, its subsidiaries, and partners from importing, marketing, and even advertising certain connected iPhone and iPad models. 5G This ban will cause the iPhone 12 and 13 models, as well as the new 5G-enabled iPad to be suspended from sale in Colombia. The judge also instructed local customs authorities to stop importing similar items, and Apple was allowed to order to contact online and offline businesses, as well as social media platforms to stop selling and advertising the affected iPhone and iPad models to the market. Additionally, the Colombian court issued an anti-suit injunction. According to the terms, this prevents Apple from using a court in another country to force Ericsson to relax its import and sales ban in Colombia. The reason Colombia banned these products is because Apple's 5G connected product is facing a lawsuit with a Swedish company. Eric's the dispute concerns licensing payments for certain 5G standard essential patent. Apple admitted that the patents were genuine but argued that Eric's son was charging too much for them. Number 12. Junk food law. Snacking is a hobby for many people. But if you are one of them, it's best not to go to Colombia. This Latin American country was one of the first in the world to impose a health tax targeting processed foods, or otherwise known as the junk food law. After years of campaigning, the junk food law came into effect this month and the tax will be introduced gradually. Additional taxes on unhealthy foods will start at 10%, then increase to 15% next year and reach 20% in 2025. The tax targets ultra-processed products defined as industrially produced ready-to-eat foods as well as those high in salt and saturated fat such as chocolate or crisps. Colombian diets are high in sodium which is linked to an increase in cardiovascular diseases such as stroke and heart failure which cause nearly a quarter of deaths annually. The average Colombian consumes 12 grams of salt per day the highest rate in Latin America and among the highest in the world. Nearly one-third of adults in this country have high blood pressure. Other non-communicable diseases are linked to diet and obesity, such as diabetes, with more than a third of deaths from diabetes occurring under the age of 70. Increasing taxes on these products is a way for people to reduce consumption of this item and improve public health. Number 11 of 7 Colors 
Coming to Colombia, one place you cannot miss is this country's famous seven-colored river. Cano Cristales River in Colombia is known as a river flowing from heaven. The Cano Cristales River is located in Meta Province, Colombia. Every year, this river attracts thousands of visitors because of its magical colors that seem to contain the entire galaxy within it. Thanks to its magical colors, Cano Cristales is also called the River of Seven Rainbow Colors by indigenous people. The name of the river Cano Cristales means glass flow, perhaps because under the sunlight, each river section has its own color, making visitors think of a cut of glass refracting sunlight to the viewer's eyes. Previously, scientists believed that Cano Cristales had such colorful colors because it was formed by algae and moss from hundreds of millions of years ago that still adhered to the river to create this unique beauty. Recently, scientists have offered another explanation. The reason the river has colors like this, Rainbow Strip is because of an aquatic species with the scientific name Macarinia clavigera. This aquatic species will change color depending on sunlight and water temperature. With the right temperature and climate, Cano Cristales is at its most brilliant between June and December every year. Cano Cristales is isolated from the outside and is a peaceful place for tourists to immerse themselves in nature. Many regulations are set by the Colombian government, so this Rainbow River retains its original captivating beauty such as welcoming a maximum of 200 visitors per day, a tour group of no more than seven people, limited swimming range and clearly designated river sections for tourists sightseeing and relaxation. For stylish girls, this place will not be suitable for swimming because the Colombian government completely prohibits tourists from diving into the river when using sunscreen or body lotion. Besides, with the purpose of protecting this river from parent complex, Colombia closes the tourist area from January to May so that nature can regenerate itself and become more beautiful when June arrives. If you have the opportunity to go to Colombia during the change of season, don't miss the opportunity to visit the Cano Cristales River. Surely, it will be the most unforgettable experience of your life. Mysterious Golden Lake. Continuing our journey to discover the natural beauty of Colombia, let's go to another extremely famous place, Guatavita Golden Lake. Guatavita Lake is a freshwater lake located about 60 km north of Bogota, the country's capital. This lake has a very special history and legend related to the legendary golden city, El Dorado. Guatavita Lake is closely related to the legend of El Dorado, a legend about a mystical land rich in gold in South America. According to legend, the lord or king of a nearby tribe would offer gold to the gods by releasing gold and precious stones into the lake. Gold offerings are performed by the indigenous Muisca people, the Andean clan in Guatavita Lake. They believe that offering gold will please the lake spirit and protect the tribe from disaster. The area around Lake Guatavita contains Muisca architectural remains, including museums and other buildings. Archaeological objects and relics show the wealth and developed culture of this tribe. Lake Guatavita is protected and managed as a national cultural heritage site of Colombia. Tourists can enjoy visiting this area, but gold offerings have been banned to protect the environment and historical sites. However, the legend of the Golden City still makes many people risk diving into the waters of Lake Guatavita with the dream of changing their lives. But unfortunately, the explorations have not yielded positive results. Number eight times is forbidden to go to indigenous villages, Colombia, is a racially diverse country. They have many ancient tribes that are used to living separately from the world. Tired of the curiosity of the modern world, indigenous people in many Colombian villages have had to ban tourists from coming here. Now tourists wanting to visit Colombian villages will be greeted by guards armed with sticks ready to stop tourists. With the rise of ecotourism along with Colombia, Peru and Brazil, this part of the Amazon has seen floods of tourists coming to experience some of the most diverse flora and fauna. Planet. Tens of thousands of backpackers are attracted by ecotourism and the opportunity to witness firsthand the long-standing traditional lives of indigenous people. Guests come here to swing with monkeys, swim with the famous pink dolphins frolic in the Amazon ways, fish for piranhas, hike through tropical forests and soak up the sunset 
on the majestic Amazon River. But the people here feel bothered. They don't need money from tourists, don't want to be pointed at, photographed, or have any contact. That's why they decided to chase away all curious people from far away. Number seven for many of the most beautiful women in the world. Colombia is famous for being the country that produces the most beautiful women in the world. According to a large-scale poll of 45,000 men and more than 66,000 women on the website Miss Travel, Colombia ranked fourth in the list of top 10 countries with the sexiest women. In the past, in 2013, they suddenly surpassed Brazil to hold the highest position on this list. Three typical Colombian beauty representatives are singer Shakira, actress and model Sofia Vergara, and beauty queen Paulina Vega. They have features that represent the impressive beauty of Colombian women. A plump and vibrant body, plump buttocks, shiny brown skin, attractive faces with deep eyes and plump lips, long and straight legs, has soft curves. The special thing is that women in this country have the ability to maintain a toned and sexy figure for a long time. At the age of 40, even 50, many Colombian women still maintain beautiful, vibrant bodies. According to anthropological documents, Colombian women are fortunate to have inherited excellent bone structure, and thanks to that, their measurements are also very balanced. Colombians also admit that the distribution of fat and muscles in their upper body, legs and buttocks is very ideal. This helps their midsection stay neat while their buttocks and hips expand, making their body curves extremely feminine. Blessed with beautiful bones, Colombian women tend to prefer moderately toned bodies rather than overly muscular physiques. Colombian beauty standards are a lean body with an ideal fat ratio instead of an overly athletic body with a low fat ratio. Therefore, if they exercise, they will not exercise too hard. Many Colombian beauties have naturally attractive bodies without much exercise. Number 6. Forest of Death Darien Gapa Forest, located on the border of Panama and Colombia, is the route chosen by many migrants to find the United States. This unwholesome environment has claimed the lives of many migrants. However, Darien Gap is also a place where adventurous people come to explore. These two stories, two contrasting situations in the wilderness, have raised many questions about the migration crisis, as well as the ethics of organizing adventure trips. Tourists are simply looking for a sense of adventure, but in this place a contrary scene exists. Migrants from Venezuela, from Ecuador, and their families led each other through the jungle amid countless dangers to find America. The fast-flowing river water can claim lives at any time. The forest roads are bumpy and difficult. The swamps are slippery. And there is also the risk of encountering groups of road robbers. Some humanitarian aid groups have criticized adventure tourism in the Darien Gap, saying these trips are inappropriate and downplay the severity of the migration crisis. Tourists and migrants rarely encounter each other on this journey. If there is such a rare opportunity, it must be a strange arrangement of fate. Number 5. Country of Mercenaries Colombia is the land of beautiful girls and wonderful natural landscapes, but is also the birthplace of many notorious mercenaries. Colombian soldiers are carefully trained, but their lives are not guaranteed after retirement, so they often accept offers to work as mercenaries in many countries around the world. According to officials and military experts, for those looking for mercenaries, Colombia is a popular choice. Nearly 60 years of civil war in this Central American country have created a force of well-trained soldiers. People in elite counter-terrorism units can retire in their 40s with meager pensions and few opportunities to find other careers. The USA is an important customer of Colombian veteran, sending them to fight Iran-backed Houthi forces in Yemen or supporting forces in Panama, El Salvador and Chile. Veterans from Latin America only get a fraction of what American or British veterans do, but their income is also four times higher than their pension. Colombian soldiers with experience in counterinsurgency, urban terrorism, or who have been sent for training in countries such as the United States and Israel are often targeted by recruiters, a military source said. All Colombian men are required to serve at least one year in the Army or National Police Force, although some who attend college can pay to be exempt from service. 
Becoming a professional soldier is one of the few options for people from humble backgrounds, especially in rural areas disproportionately affected by conflict. They are paid low wages, do dangerous work and are far from relatives and have been the subject of criticism from the military accused of human rights abuses. Number 4. Social Instability Colombia is considered one of the most unstable countries in the world. Drugs and other evils are rampant in this country. Colombia has long faced problems of violence and crime, especially related to drug trafficking and organized crime. Organized criminal groups often cause violence, affecting security in many areas. The Colombian government faces many problems in the management process, and this has also caused protests and social protests to occur in Colombia, especially by protesters who want to express their anger at the economic situation. Polit Some protests may lead to conflicts and clashes with security forces. The gap between rich and poor, as well as between urban and rural areas, also causes social instability and increases protest situations. Colombia has also made efforts to resolve the above problems and is gradually restoring stability. However, this country is still not a good place for you to live in the long term. Dorsheim der Humble number 3, Ted Days. The country of Colombia in South America has more than a thousand national Ted holidays a year, meaning on average, there are nearly three Ted holidays every day. The Tet holidays of Colombia people are divided into small groups, Tet of the God of Agriculture, religious Tet of each ethnic group, Tet of Male and Female Beauty Contests, Tet of Coffee Harvest. Agricultural Tet established over 100 years ago is the most typical and typical Tet of the Colombian people, starting on January 5th and is the biggest national Tet celebrated by everyone from adults, children, young and old the most enthusiastic response of the year in this country. During the days of Tet, all the boys and girls of all ethnicities and localities in the country dress very beautifully and elegantly, then take to the streets to sing and dance. They mix pots of black and white powder and throw it on passers-by, then at the end of the day go to the river to bathe and return home. Another popular New Year's custom in Colombia is the custom of burning the old year. This custom involves the entire family. Burning Mr. Old Year is a traditional custom of Colombian people. During the New Year, everyone in the family together makes a very large effigy called Mr. Old Year. Then they stuff it inside with unnecessary things, especially things that can remind them of sad memories from the past year. Everything will be burned on New Year's Eve. This custom represents the Colombian people's desire to wash away the unpleasant events of the past year and welcome the New Year with optimism. Overall, these are the happiest days of the year for Colombians, and they take this time extremely seriously. Number 2. Being late is a custom. In Colombia, being late to an event or somewhere is quite normal. Colombians are very relaxed about this issue. No matter how punctual you are, you must respect their culture and habits. Being 15 or 20 minutes late is not considered late. Some Latin cultures, including Colombians, tend to have a more flexible view of time. This means that being a little late can be considered acceptable, and there is usually not much pressure to be on time. Due to their leisurely lifestyle, combined with Colombia's congested traffic, or simply stopping to talk to a friend in the middle of the street, locals neither expect nor appreciate punctual in communication. Party plans are often affected by the above situations, so the party host considers it a polite attitude to hold the party later than the party opening time. That has become an unwritten law in this country. Number 1. The Secret to Happiness If you ask 100 Colombians if they are happy, you will definitely get 100 of the same answer, yes. Colombians are music and dance lovers. They believe that money may be a necessary thing in life, but it is not the most important. Their culture is to appreciate and be satisfied with what is currently available. According to a 2012 survey, 87% of Colombians said they were very happy, and only 2% said they were unhappy. This has caused Colombia to have a happiness index of up to 85%, 20% higher than the Global Happiness Index, and twice that of the US. And in the years that followed, Colombia continued to repeatedly rank on the list of the happiest countries in the world. So what makes this country happy? 
There are many questions that arise such as, does Colombia have the best quality of life and healthcare system? High job prospects. They have the highest life expectancy and low risk of disease. However, all of these are not factors that make Colombia happy. It is known that the South American country has up to 1,000 festivals a year, such as Carnival Barranquilla, the most important folk culture festival in Colombia and one of the largest carnivals in the world. Then there are the wonderful flower displays in the Feria de las Flores La Festival or the colorful parade of Caribbean coastal residents in the Festival de Burra. The above is possible because this is a country with many ethnicities and cultures. Different traditional cultures, all of them are respected by the Colombia government in free harmony in all aspects of ethnic belief and culture. Not only that, in Colombia, music is present everywhere such as train stations, bus stations, pedestrian tunnels, supermarkets or on the streets. The most typical is the largest walking street in Colombia, many kilometers long and always visited by tens of thousands of people. Like in many other places, the most visible thing here is the borderless presence of music. Freelance singers organized bands of a few members. All of them are people with a mission to inspire music to those around them. Colombia is also a country famous for its dances, including the ravishingly beautiful salsa dance. Salsa helps people overcome inequality with its captivating rhythm and the sublimation of love. It helps people become closer because it requires people to hug each other for a period and make eye contact, helping them get to know each other and see the best in each other. It is a cultural heritage of peace. Most outsiders know that Colombia is a country that still has violent poverty, drugs, corruption, human trafficking, and war that can break out at any time for more than 50 years because of conflicts between governments. Government and the rebel group FARC or L, while peace negotiations went on endlessly. But it seems that the chaos and unpredictability of life in the future builds courage and optimism, and perhaps plays an important role in the happiness of Colombians. For most Colombians, nothing is more important than family, friends, and fun. It can be said that Colombian people have never lost their optimism and resilience. The suffering still happened, but they continued with their lives sitting on the street, cooking chicken stew in a large pot, drinking wine and laughing with their families and neighbors. They love life so much that every morning they can wake up and say, I feel quite happy today. Colombia is not only home to historical treasures and traditional cultures, but is also a progressive country facing challenges and changes. All of this creates a colorful and unique image with a regular and the strange blend to create a unique picture of Colombia. Hopefully you have found it interesting and encountered many new things through this video. Subscribe to the channel and stay tuned to discover more about strange things around the world. Thank you for joining us and see you on your next adventures.